Flowers plants. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pichods or Pichaw. <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> hey, how's it going? It's Wednesday. It's time for Beautiful Bourbon. And uh, I got to start off, first of all, by saying hello and thank you to my neighbor. My neighbor was nice enough to let me take my photo on his back patio, his back porch tonight. And uh, yeah, it's, Sagamore Spirit comes from a series of horse farm, like a horse farm. It used to be a horse farm. And his back fence kind of looks a little bit like those white fences at horse farms. So he let me take the photo there. Really cool of him. Uh, okay, so thank you to him. Um, thank you to Danielle for making me look good today. She did my hair. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a thing tomorrow. I've got to go out of town. So, and I've got to work amongst a bunch of professional people and look nice. So... Hence the haircut, which I needed anyway. I mean, I'm, for you guys, for you, it was all for you, all for you. Uh, let's see, tonight, uh, it's Sagamore Spirit. Boo! Uh, so, this is founded. Would you believe I came down here without any glasses? Don't worry, I got glasses. I got glasses to use. <laughs> I wonder what I was forgetting. I just have to dig these out. Hopefully they'll, they're, they're clean. They're not clean. <laughs> just do this real quick. <laughs> this is not my best look. <laughs> All right. That's funny. I think I got another glass. Somewhere. No worries, no worries. I'll just use this one, and I, the, the ice won't fit, so we'll just do it without ice. But that's okay. All right, that's funny. That's hilarious. Take two. All right. That's just funny. Okay, so Sagamore Spirit, founded in 2013. Uh, signature rye whiskey founded in uh, uh, 20, uh, 2013 comes from Baltimore, Maryland, in the Port Covington District, sitting on five acres of waterfront property. About 22 miles from Baltimore itself. Pride themselves on sourcing Maryland-grown grains for their mash in what they call the grain-to-glass philosophy. A lot of people are adopting similar philosophies, trying to go with locally grown grains. The uh, name of the rye comes from the farm, Sagamore Farm, which was once a horse farm. They may have horses on there just for show, but I don't think it's a horse farm anymore. Uh, let's see, distillery was built... In 2017, it sits on top of a big cache of limestone. All right. So Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey is following a trend that we've been kind of exploring lately, which is creative blending. Now, we did this with Heaven's Door, the Bob Dylan endorsed product. We also did it with High West. They do creative blending. Now, Heaven's Door... They don't just blend the juice, they blend the distillers. They go all over for different master distillers with all their different brands and all their picks, all the special things they do. High West, not quite as elaborate, but they do uh, some creative blending from different distilleries. This is creative blending as well, but it's not necessarily from different distilleries. This is MGP juice. And it comes from two different mash bills. One is a high rye mid mid grain mid mid level corn low malted barley and then another one which is what did i start with low rye <laughs> so low rye high corn high barley high rye low corn low barley <whistles> getting that going <laughs> okay so anyway so that's it's two different blends it's mgp but they're careful to point out 
that even though it, hey Aaron, how are you? That even though it's MGP, it's not traditional sourced whiskey. It's contracted. So Sagamore Spirit wanted to do a Maryland style rye, which is kind of on its death knell. I mean, you got the Kentucky rye, you got the Indiana rye, you got the Alberta rye. It's a tough market. And Baltimore rye, or, you know, Maryland style rye isn't exactly screaming, pay attention to me. But the goal of this distillery is to bring back Maryland style rye, which is a little bit more rounded, uh, not as spicy, not as grassy, somewhere in between. Uh, I've got an actual note here. Uh, have its own character, sweeter style of rye, not quite as dry or spicy, and not as grainy as grassy as uh, Alberta rye. So the final spirit is actually proofed with limestone water. Now in Kentucky, you, your favorite bourbons and ryes, they use the limestone water to uh, to cook the mash, but they use reverse osmosis water for their proofing to take it from 125 or whatever proof down to your 80, 90, 100 proof, right? This they don't use reverse osmosis water. They actually use that filtered limestone water. So tonight when we do our water test, we're going to do it with this. All right. That's, uh, that's old limestone mixing water. It's more gimmick, but there are some cases where it makes sense. This is not a high proof. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, Homer's watching. Hey, Homer. Welcome. Welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let's see. Um... This is a blend of two straight rye mash bills, as I talked about, uh, aged four to six years in high char American oak barrels. That uh, presents pretty decent color for the little bit of time that it's been aging. Norm is watching. Hey, Norm. Welcome to the show. Uh, I've got my, uh, my dog groomer texting me. I forgot to pay her, so she's texting me saying, give me my money. <laughs> I should have. Not my fault. Not her fault. Nobody's fault. We just got to get it through. So that's what that, I'm getting texts. And then I'm getting uh, messages that somebody that I work with, their water heater burst today. So that's, that's unfortunate. That, I've had, God, that's awful. Okay. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Okay. Before you roll your eyes at just the fact that it's another MGP, as I said, uh, this is not sourced. They sent them a contract and said, this is what we want. This is the mash bill we want. This is how we want it done. And presumably what's going to happen... The distillery was built in 2017. What's supposed to happen is once their bourbon, pardon me, once their rye gets to be four and a half years old, they're going to start using their own. So we'll see. Um, it's been about four and a half years. And I understand they were supposed to have had a release last year, and they did, as a matter of fact, now that I think about it. They had a bottled and, buy, bottled and bond released last year, and it was their in-house juice. Um, so... Uh, see what am I, I'm, I'm skipping over stuff because I wrote a script and I'm, I just, I, I'm just going through it here. Uh, yeah. Love you too, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> Paul's watching. Hey, Paul, welcome. Paul's been, uh, Paul's been getting into it lately. He's been doing some good drinking, some good shopping. I've been a little bit jelly about, uh, some of the stuff and he has, I think it was Paul that was, uh, drinking some of the Bernheim, which is the wheat whiskey. It's not a wheated whiskey. It doesn't have meat as uh, wheat as part of the mash bill. It has wheat as the primary grain in the mash bill. And he prompted me to want to reopen my Bernheim. And by golly, that's a good pour. <laughs> that's a good pour. Me likey. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, Ohio Staters can buy the cask strength. This one, the signature. The barrels select in the rum cask finish. They offer more than that, and they have experimental releases and distillery select picks as well. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, so the blend is uh, ultimately, once you got the two straight ryes that come together, the ult ultimate mash bill is 95% rye, 5% malted barley, plus a 51% rye contract distilled by MGP. It says on the back, distilled in Indiana. So this is still the older juice. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's all the information. That's all you need. Let's taste this stuff in my dirty glass because I didn't bring glasses down. So silly. You missed the beginning of it. So don't go back and watch that part because it's stupid. 
<laughs> I washed the glass out with my shirt. <laughs> in too big of a hurry like always uh this is the seventh so next week we'll be back on thursdays again on the 15th and we do have a fantastic bottle we've actually drank it on the show before but i've never given it a proper review because we've already always grouped it in with other stuff so next week we're going to do something that you'll like all right so let's get into this a little bit uh this is the sagamore spirit the signature Ooh. That's got a nice nose. It's fruity, citrusy. It's, uh, really sweet caramel coming out. It's a very, it's a sweet nose. I like it. Again, this is supposed to be what they call a Maryland style rye, which is supposed to be sweeter than the other ryes. So so far so good. I'm I'm liking what I'm getting so far. Uh, there's definitely honey on that. There's a, there's an herb. I can't decide if it's rosemary or sage. I'm leaning more towards rosemary. Because it's so fragrant. Now, they're both fragrant. If, you, if you've never walked through a sage patch, you are missing out on one of life's amazing pleasures. I was on a film shoot in um, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and we were taken out to this little dude ranch, where it's—I mean, I mean—it's an actual dude ranch. And, and the guy, the guide, the the uh, park um, ranger who took us out there, he was kind of our guide while we were there. He said, "You got to go out there, man. They got ten cent coffee, and they got like chili that's fantastic, and burgers, and..." You're going to love their coffee. You're going to love their coffee. Ten cent coffee. Where else are you going to get ten cent coffee? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, 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 let's go. So we went, and yeah, the coffee was delicious. For ten cents, pfft, heck, for a dollar these days. That coffee was pretty darn good, and the hamburger was amazing. Had green chilies on it and white cheese. Ooh, baby. But then we left, and we went to this really, really old graveyard, like old western graveyard. But to get to it, we had to walk through this big field of sage, and I guess, like, the antelope and the bison all, like, mow down the sage. They love it. It's sweet, and it's fragrant, and it's healthy. But the smell on my pants and on my hands, oh, my gosh, was it amazing. Just to, just to walk through that field. So you never get a chance to, to walk through. I mean, some people na locally that I know have, like, big caches of sage growing on their land. And you just go like this and rub your hands through it. It's amazing. Just fantastic. Anyway, I don't think it's sage. <laughs> I think it's rosemary. Definitely honey. Boy, that's just popping in citrus. Creme brulee, maybe. That's, a, that's, a, that's something that's hitting me, creme brulee. Um, yeah. All right, let's try this. Okay. When you do the whiskey chew, you want it to bloom. You want that burn to start in the center of your tongue and move. It doesn't always do that. Sometimes it's stationary. Sometimes it burns more towards the back than the front. Tonight, I had to let it sit. This is only 83 proof. It is chill filtered. Um, I had to let it sit. Uh, not back, not just a little bit forward on the tongue. It just set. It's like a little pinprick. Boop. And that was what I got. Um, so that was, that was priming the palate. Now let's go for an actual taste. I wish I would have used a clean glass. I mean, it's not, I haven't used it. It's just been sitting in a box. The nose gives you more expression than the palate, to me. 
However, the palate is not unfriendly. Um, giving it the designation of being different than Alberta rye and different than Indiana rye, I know, it was distilled in Indiana, but in the stylings of a Maryland rye. It is indeed sweeter and softer. Um, Mouthfeel is pretty typical for what you'd get out of an 83 proof bourbon that's been chill filtered. I wouldn't say it's silky in any way. It's just there. Um, so there's nothing really on, on, the, on the palate that's going, hey, I am unusual as far as the mouthfeel. As far as the taste, it is not a typical rye. That's right off the bat. Um, it is somewhere in between the grassy Alberta rye and the spicy Indiana rye. Again, the nose gave me a lot more expression than the palate, but let's try it again. It's interesting. It's got a really nice, um, a really nice citrus note to it. The honey is still present. Um, I'm not getting cinnamon. I'm getting more almost of a nutmeg, uh, maybe a little clove. Um, like I say, it, it sits somewhere right in the center. I mean, that's a really apt description. It sits right in the center of that spicy uh, Indiana rye and that grassy Alberta rye. Um, some of the, I did read a couple of reviews and I, I wrote down their notes. Um, the one that comes from Sagamore Spirit itself says, candied dried, dried orange peel. Orange peel. Yeah, I told you citrus, and that's what it reminds me of. Uh, clove and nutmeg. Now, I did not read that before. <laughs> clove and nutmeg, I got it. Yeah, sounds good. Lingering hits of walnut and brown sugar to finish. I give it the walnut, brown sugar, not so much. They, they want to give it more of a sweet expression than I'm getting. It's not as sweet on the palate as it is on the nose. But it is sweeter than the other two rise that I normally would would uh, get a hold of. I do have one other one. Uh, nose, this one says caramel, dill, cinnamon, oak, orange peel, vanilla, and chalk. That doesn't sound very tasty at all. Uh, I'm not getting chalk and I'm really not getting a whole lot of vanilla. I guess if I look for it, it's there. Uh, that's nose, palate, caramel, oak. Well, again, if I look for it, if I, if I, okay, oak, yeah. And it is a number four char. Either there's three or a four, so it's going to be, it's going to be oaky. It's, it's 83 proof, and I'm used to things at this point that have a little higher proof. So finding everything on an 83 proof is a little bit harder to me. Um, it's not nearly as complex as other low proofers that I've had, uh, but it is 95% rye. It doesn't have a lot else in it, although the mash bills are mixed. Um, clove, that one says clove as well. Dill, um, orange peel, and some vanilla candy. Again, I'm getting the clove, I'm getting the orange peel. I'm not getting a whole lot of vanilla unless I really look for it. Uh, I'm... I'm going to explore this dill thing. I, I'm not catching any dill either. So let's just, you know, sometimes you got to look for it. Uh, I've told this story before. I'll tell it again briefly. Uh, I used to be more into wine. I got my palate by learning to taste wine. And I was at a winery. And uh, we were actually doing a documentary series on wineries and virtual tastings for the OGIC, the Ohio Grape Industries Committee. And we had gone to this winery, and, and I'd gotten to know the folks. We had done a couple videos there, and it was nice folks, really neat folks. And they knew that I was getting into my wines and things, and we sat down, and they wanted me to try this new wine they had. And they had it on the menu, and they had all these tasting notes on the menu, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I said, ah, there's, there's a big one you're not writing down. And they're like, what? I said, I'm getting a note of kiwi. And they went, what? I said, yeah, I'm getting kiwi. 
like it's yelling at me. It's there. It's present. It's loud. So the guy comes over, grabs my glass, swishes it around a little bit, and takes a sip out of it. Goes, hey, calls for his wife. They got to change the menu because he caught kiwi. Sometimes you got to just be told, especially for young drinkers who don't know what that means. What do you mean you're tasting orange? What do you mean you're tasting caramel? What do, what is that? What do you, what do you mean salt? Are you, why is it salty? They don't necessarily understand that. First of all, it's, they may be having trouble getting past the bloom, the burn, um, which, you know, an 83 is a great one to start with for somebody who's a new drinker, although rye, I'd start them with a bourbon myself. But there's some great ryes out there. This is, this is a good one. That's not great. Um, but... Uh, they don't know what that means. I, I mean, we had a tasting with a guest a few weeks ago, and it was our first tasting, and she didn't really know what to do until I started pointing it out. Do you taste any of this? Do you taste any of this? And it's not those things are in there. It's what it reminds you of. That, that, that barrel, that char in the barrel is going to help bring out these flavors that aren't really there. They just kind of remind you. They're not force-feeding you. Those, those flavors are not put in there. They're just there. <laughs> so, Tom's watching. Hey, Tom, how are you? How are you, man? Like he, Tom gave me a bottle of uh, Jim Beam from 1980, uh, and you know it's it's a great it's a great bourbon to start with. There was a guy I was reading a sub on Reddit who was feeling bad that all he had really tasted is the 80 proof white label Jim Beam, and. I was really proud of our community because they went on and they, they told this guy, look, there's nothing wrong with 80 proof Jim Beam. Yeah, picked a good one, <laughs> you know, for 80 proof. You're not going to get a whole lot better. I mean, that, this, is the, this is the largest seller of spirits in the world, of bourbon in the world anyhow, one of the largest distilleries in the world, and they've had all the time, hundreds of years to get it right, and Jim Beam gets it right. It took me a long time to try Jim Beam because I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to be selling out. Blah. But it's, even the 80 proof is pretty darn tasty. And, and that's, it's got some complexity to it. This does not. The Jim Beam does. Uh, the Evan Williams. All those starter bourbons that we talked about months ago. Evan Williams and Jim Beam and Wild Turkey, the 81 proof and uh, Four Roses. And, I mean, all those, all those in that genre. They're all different. They all have different profiles. They all taste different. They all feel different in your mouth. Uh, but they have a lot in common. Um, this doesn't have a lot in common with much of anything. Aaron says, 22nd, we're going to open up a special bottle. Don't forget. Is that the 22nd? <laughs> I got to do the math. See, so you tell me these things when I'm drinking, you and then you say, don't forget. <laughs> All right, let's go back into this one more time. Mm. If you weren't here last week, one of the things I told you last week that I need to do but that you need to do too, is to make sure that you taste your pores at different parts of your mouth. Different amounts, just a little sip, different places in your mouth, where are you gonna focus your attention? You, <clears throat> you are not gonna believe the note that I got on that pour that time. I took it right across the very tip of my tongue and I got strawberry. Loud and proud, ripe and red strawberry. I have never, ever had that note on a, on a dram before. Never. And it was delicious. <laughs> I told you last week too, sit it down. Let it sit. Set it down. Wait. Clear your palate, then try it again. I mean, there's just so many different ways to taste. And there's times that you'll get a note here, and then you won't ever get that note again. The High West that we did a couple of weeks ago that was from a peated barrel... The peat hits you early, but as that, as that dram sits there, it goes away. So for people who don't like peated whiskeys, like scotches and things like that, pour it and then wait. I let, I let a couple people try that uh, 
two weekends ago, and one of the guys who liked scotch really liked it, and the other guy who doesn't like scotch really didn't like it. <laughs> I sit somewhere in the middle. I like them both. All right, let's hit that again. He will forget. First Thursday after the big move. Okay. I don't remember what what bottle it was. If I think about it, I'll probably remember. But not now. <laughs> okay, the more I drink this, the more I like it. I don't think it'll hold up to a cocktail, although it might. Let's, um, let's give it the water shot just to see if it opens it up at all. I can't let myself go too crazy. I have to work with police officers tomorrow. That'll be fun. It actually is fun. Uh, I drive, I get to go to Kentucky. I get to drive down to Lexington, Kentucky. And I get to work with the Kentucky State Police. That They're the, there would be the Highway Patrol of Kentucky State Police. And uh, they're a great group of people to work with. They're fun to be around. Um, it's just a long drive down. I go to Frankfurt for a hamburger at Bourbon on Main. Because you have to, it's the law. And if the line's not stupid, I might stop at Buffalo Trace. And then I go to Frankfurt and do my thing, and I drive home. Eight hours in the car. <laughs> it's worth it. It's fun. All right. So this is the limestone water, and I'm using it because this is what they actually proof their rye with. Again, as most distilleries will proof their juice with um, with reverse osmosis water. Sagamore Spirit sits on limestone. They have an aquifer there that used to be used to um, get water to the horses, and so they use that lime that limestone filtered water to actually proof their spirit. Um, one thing about this, they chill filter. I'm not a fan of filtering. I don't mind it. I mean, most bourbons are filtered. Either charcoal filtered in Tennessee or chill filtered, which is where you freeze the liquid as much as alcohol will freeze, and then anything that isn't alcohol, which won't freeze, clumps together and can be filtered out. That's chill filtering, in essence. I may have skipped a couple steps, but that's, that's the essence of chill filtering. Filtering out anything that isn't the alcohol. Um, this happens before it goes in the barrel right after distillation before it goes into the barrel. Um, this is not chill filtered, but when they proof it, they're using limestone water, which is not filtered, not chill filtered. It may be filtered, but it's not chill filtered. So this might improve the mouthfeel ever so slightly. We shall see. All right. Let's give it a little swim. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. <laughs> Met a new neighbor today, and it's, it's funny, it's not a new neighbor. He's been in the house longer than I've been in the neighborhood, but I've never seen the dude before. So we, I was walking the dogs, and we stopped and talked a while, and he's big into, like, cognac, and, and he likes a little bit of scotch, and he says his wife just retired, and they gave, him, or gave her a bottle of, Jim, or of uh, Knob Creek. I'm like, yeah. So... He and I are going to have a drink one of these times this summer, before summer's gone. <laughs> Sit out on somebody's back porch and enjoy each other's company. New neighbor that is actually an old neighbor that I, he didn't know of me and I didn't know of him. <laughs> and he's still working. I don't know what he does, I didn't ask. But he hasn't retired yet. All right. All these stories, I have so many. Those orange notes are still on the nose, even though I watered it down a little bit. Uh, the honey is still there. The notes don't change a lot. I mean, they can 
if you add a lot of water or if you've got a really high proof and you've added some water, that'll knock it down. This is such a low proof to begin with. I didn't, I couldn't have lowered it too much. But we'll find out here in a minute, huh? Actually, in a second. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the notes are still there. Um, it got a little more rye-ish. Not spicy, but more twiggy. Um, a little more... There's some hazelnut there that I didn't catch before. It didn't really improve the mouthfeel that much. It's 83 proof. I wouldn't put this in a cocktail, um, and I, I don't think that it was a good idea to put water on it. So, yeah. I, therefore, even though I went to the laborious effort of creating a brand new, gorgeous, clear ice sphere, it isn't going to fit in there. <laughs> so, we're just not going to do it. Isn't that gorgeous, though? Isn't that beautiful? I want to kiss it. Mwah. Mm. It'll save till next week. All right. Got to run. Have to finish watching later. Enjoy that Bernheim. I did. I really, really did. It's 90 proof. It's not going to be outrageous, but the flavors are fantastic. Again, it's, it's a weeded. It's a weeded whiskey. So the primary grain is wheat. It has to be at least 51% wheat. And I did this a while back. I can't even tell you which one. I think this is number 115 tonight, 115. Um, so I can't even tell you which one it was. It was probably back in the early spring. Um, so go back and watch that one and, and, um, and get the notes on Bernheim and get the mash bill and all that stuff. It may even be 100% wheat, but I don't think it was. I think it was a mash bill of over 51% wheat. I don't know. It's one of the few wheat whiskeys on the market. There aren't very many, and Bernheim is fantastic. And it's set for how many months since the last Burbcast that we did on that one? Buy that one. That's fantastic. All right, last uh, sip of this here. It's good. I mean, I would buy another bottle of this. Um, I think it's nice for a daily sipper. It's got some nice bourbon-esque notes for a rye, and I like ryes that do that. Um, it's definitely not super grassy like an Alberta rye, which I've really had trouble enjoying. I do like the Indiana rye a lot better. Um, but this, again, is somewhere in between. It's softer. Uh, it's not as spicy. It's a little bit sweeter than any of the ryes. It's just got a nice, it's got a nice flavor profile to it. I'm not going to add this to my top 25. I'm not going to even add this to my top 50. Um, but it's not bad. It's uh, it's it's tasty enough for what it's for. Uh, it should be on everybody's shelf. It's not very expensive. It's 34.99 in Ohio, um, and it's worth a it's worth a pick. Um, now, Central Ohio bourbon enthusiasts had their own pick of this, a barrel pick of this, and I guess it was outstanding. So I am interested in finding out more about the different picks that Sagamore Spirit has, the bottled and bond that came out, which is all their own juice. It's not MGP, it's theirs. So I'd like to try that. Um, they've got some other uh, distillery uh, versions, although going to Baltimore, Maryland for booze. I'm actually going to be in Washington, D.C. soon. I don't think I'll be able to make the side trip, but it's pretty close. I could go there. <laughs> I'm going to be amongst a, a group of other people. I'm actually going on an honor flight uh, with a group of uh, veterans, uh, World War II, uh, Korea, Vietnam. Um, uh, we're going to go to the honor flight, and I'm going to be documenting it. Um, I did it 10 years ago. They're still using what I made 10 years ago, and it was life-changing for me. Um, 
I will, after we're done with this, I'll add a link to the original documentary that I did 10 years ago that they still use. I can watch that and I will still tear up watching it because it was such a powerful experience for me. Um, so that's what I'm doing next week. Uh, I'm going to uh, DC for an honor flight. So uh, pray for those veterans. Uh, when we got back last time, 10 years ago, before I even got the documentary out, two or three of the veterans had passed. Um, the World War II veterans are, are disappearing very, very quickly. And soon that's going to be the fate of the Korea veterans as well. Um, you know, we're all getting older, and we don't seem to be getting older slower. <laughs> it just seems to be zooming right by. Um, so, but this, this experience, just real quick, I'll tell you about this experience, what we're going to do. Um, there are veterans who are not capable of making the trip to D.C. physically. It's too risky for them and their lives to get on a plane, get on a bus, do the trip to D.C. But they still want the experience. And some of them have never seen the monuments that were built in their honor. So what we're going to do is go, and I'm going to make another documentary, one that's updated. But we're also going to create an experience so they can create, they, they're going to be in like this, um, the Honor Flight is going to make a movable, collapsible, immersive experience for veterans who can't make the trip. So let's say they go into a warehouse somewhere and they get the experience of what it's like to be onboarded onto the plane and fly and see stuff. And then they're going to get the experience of what it's like to visit the World War II Memorial, which if you haven't seen it, it is gorgeous. It is beautiful. Whoever thought that out was a genius. Gorgeous memorial and, and deserving, really deserving. So there'll be a mock-up of that. And they'll, it'll be painted, it'll be great, and then there'll be video there that shows people doing what they do when you go on an honor flight. Right? So the veterans are there, and people come up to them, and they thank them for their service, and they tell them their stories. Oh, my grandfather was at the Battle of the Bulge, or whatever. It's, it's an amazing experience. And again, I'll, I'll post the link on this when we're done. And with the mock-up, they're going to be able to have that experience of people coming up to them and talking to them and, tell, and sharing their stories and, and being grateful for their service um, at each of the monuments. So we'll, we'll do World War II. We'll do the Korean monument, which is a little more surreal and a little more um, quiet and creepy, um, but it, it, makes a, it makes a point. It's an important memorial because it was a different war. It wasn't World War II and it wasn't Vietnam. It was its own thing. And then we do go to the Vietnam Wall, uh, which is very solemn and very quiet, uh, very quiet, more quiet than any other memorial. It is just solemn. Uh, so we'll give them that experience as well. We'll let them see what it's like to visit that memorial. They won't be able to scratch any names or anything like that, but, uh, but they'll be able to experience what it's like to visit. So that's what we're doing uh, next week, and I'm excited to do it again. Uh, Honor Flight is a great organization. If you can donate to Honor Flight, uh, it's going to a great, a great organization that uh, services our best generation. So, All right, next week. Enough soapboxing. Uh, next week, we have had this one before on the show. I think twice. Um, when uh, Kevin first visited, I think he might have brought some of this. And then one of them, when Aaron was here for uh, <laughs> the night that I got <laughs> toasted, uh, we did this. But I'm going to do it again on its own. And I'm going to do the smoke wagon, uncut and unfiltered. I have not given it its own day, its own moment in the sun. Don't put bourbon in the sun, it's bad for it. Uh, <laughs> its own spotlight, don't put it in the spotlight, it's bad for it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to be doing Smoke Wagon uncut and unfiltered next week. I actually just got another bottle of this. <laughs> uh, straight from Las Vegas. Uh, a friend of mine who's a composer out there works with all the shows. Uh, did a bourbon hunt for me and uh, brought back another bottle of Smoke Wagon. So I'm going to give this a proper tasting next week, next 
Thursday. We're going to be back on Thursdays next week. We're going to get done with this Wednesday stuff and get back to Thursdays, as uh, some of you have uh, indicated works better for you. So thank you for uh, checking us out, and thanks for watching. Those of you who are new to the show, thank you so much for checking us out and uh, sitting here with us and watching this thing. Um, we try to have fun with it. If you have suggestions, something you want us to try, something you've always wanted to try, I might have it in-house. I may be able to try it for you. Otherwise, I'll see what I can do to get it. I am going to be in Kentucky tomorrow, so get putting out those messages. Let me know what you want me to grab while I'm down there, and uh, I'll do my best and try it here for you on uh, Beautiful Bourbon. Check us out on Instagram, Beautiful Bourbon. Uh, we have a blog. Uh, which is terribly out of date. Uh, that's at beautifulbourbon.com. Also can be found at burbcast.com, B-O-U-R-B-C-A-S-T.com. <clears throat> and then, of course, here on Facebook. And uh, we're starting to populate YouTube. Uh, we've got all but, I think, two tonight, and the last week's, all of them are up on YouTube. That's YouTube at uh, Beautiful Bourbon. So um, do do follow us there and share that and like it and hit the bell or whatever the... I don't know what all that is. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Nate's watching. Hey, Nate, <laughs> how are you? And Bill, I missed a few people. Sorry, I was chatting. I was being chatty. So, thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in. Again, Smoke Wagon next week, and we will see you then. And thanks again for watching Beautiful Bourbon. I do really appreciate it. I hope you had a good time. Because I know I did. <laughs>